I've done two controversial videos on this channel. One why Tesla suck and one why Scotty Kilmer sucks. And I can say with complete confidence that the Scotty Kilmer fanboys are way worse than Tesla fanboys. <gasps> now yes, that's right. A year ago, I made a video on why you shouldn't trust Scotty Kilmer. That was edited two years ago, and it was made to a very low standard. I didn't really get my points across that well, so we're remaking it. Next week's video, you don't want to miss that. That's replying to all the hate comments we got on that video. Trust me, that's got to be a good video, because those comments... There wasn't a lot of IQ that went into them, they're pretty funny. Bruh. So if you don't want to miss that, bang the bell icon, because I know you don't. It's got to be a good video. <laughs> but anyways, let's get on with this. Blow up your engines. Fuck up your engine. Oh, piss off. Reason number one why you shouldn't trust Scotty Kilmer is his advice is literally life threatening sometimes. It is insane, right? And change the oil. You just have to jack the car up a little because all modern cars are pretty low to the ground. Now, some guys who are really worried to put a jack stand under here, but really, we're just jacking the car up. The tires are still on the car, so even if it went down, the car would still land on the tires. It wouldn't crush you. Bruh. He acknowledged that the jack could fail, but it will land on its wheels, so it won't squash you. Even though, right before that, he said, Because all modern cars are pretty low to the ground. Bruh. Mate, have you looked at cars recently? If it lands on your wheels, you are being squashed! Your life is being uninstalled. Now, even if you have, you know, let's say, a lifted F250, you got a hand up there, taking out the oil filter. If that car falls, you are breaking your arm. He also then later uses this, um, product on brake lines. Now, clearly on the packaging, it says not for use on automotive brake lines. Ooh. Your brakes are a bit important to say the least. Are you sure about that? We've also seen him, you know, just let a brake caliper that's heavy dangle on the brake lines. If you were to tell me that that is safe... <laughs> mate! Brakes are important, right? Isn't that something you get taught on, like, day one? How can you trust his advice when you can literally die from it? Reason number two, right? He clickbaits so much, and if you're telling me that he does not clickbait, you are lying to yourself. It's crazy. How can you trust someone that lies, right? And even just his channel is very lazy, you know? He recycles thumbnails a lot. His content is very repetitive. How many videos does he say that Jeeps are unreliable? Just do one video, mate. I know, he contradicts himself. So much, right? We all know he loves Toyotas and Hondas, but then he does videos saying why you shouldn't buy a Toyota or a Honda. He also used to say that Mazdas are unreliable. But then guess what? In the video of the most reliable car manufacturers, Mazdas in it. What? And you know he talks a lot about stuff that he doesn't know about, right? He said a fifty-dollar Bluetooth speaker can replace your car's stereo. How? How can it replace surround sound with, you know, 4 to 15 speakers, that heavy bass, that loudness that you get? He, he knows nothing about audio, right? He even admits that he is deaf, but he still makes a video about car audio acting like he knows everything when he basically admits he doesn't. How do you trust someone that acts like an, they know everything in a video when they admit that in a different video that they're deaf and that knows nothing about car audio? There's also many things he doesn't know about, like he looked at a ram air intake and called it a cold air intake. I think they can put on a cold air intake, a cold air intake. Bruh. How does he not know the difference? He has no idea what he's talking about, and that's not just it. Look at these examples. Now this car is a classic roadster. Bruh. Up here on the Supra, it has one supercharger, Bruh. while the BMW Z4 has two superchargers. Bruh. That's the Tesla Model S. When you pay 15 grand for its ludicrous function, it can go 0 to 60 in 2.0 seconds. That's just insane. Bruh. If you think I'm making some pretty good points, maybe consider hitting the like. Chances are, though, there's probably a lot of Scotty Kilmer fanboys here that won't even consider what I'm saying. I'll just hit the dislike and comment something dumb like, No, no. That's wrong. Like, 
Give me reasons, man! Come on! Now time for a weird sort of Scotty Kilmer type angle. His instructional videos teaching you how to do stuff are terrible. They're literally pointless, right? He did a video, how to change your clutch. It was four minutes long. Four minutes! Listen, Scotty Kilmer's audience is typically people that don't really know much about cars, right? A four minute video is not going to teach a noob, or let alone a car guy, how to change the clutch in your car. But the cherry on top of that is, right, his video on how to engine swap your car. Two minutes. Two minutes. That is useless to literally anyone on this entire planet. His instructional videos are useless. He skips over all the steps. Then take off the wheels and remove the drive shafts. Take all the bolts off and move it out of the way. There's a drive shaft. I, I feel really bad if anyone's been like, oh, okay, that's an easy job, I guess. It's only a two minute video. And you've actually went and started it and you've started disconnecting, you know, all the parts of the car. And now they've got a car that doesn't run. And you think his video on floor mats is three minutes long. I, I guess floor mats are harder to change than an engine. <laughs> Next reason, right? His advice is only ever about reliability and nothing else. Because when he buys a car, the only thing he cares about is reliability. When basically everyone else has many criteria that they think about when buying a car. How practical is it? Is it economical? Does it look good? Is it comfortable? Does it have good features and, you know, infotainment? People consider many things when buying a, a car, not just reliability, right? So advice that's just reliability isn't really that good. Businessmen buy Mercedes because they do long driving, right? They need a car that's comfortable for it, and they need a car that gives a good brand image for their business, right? Tradies need a car with a torquey engine so it can tow a lot and a ute that can have a lot of weight in the tray and can tow very well. They want an interior that, you know, can be cleaned up easily. And hopefully, right, it could be a bit comfortable from when you're driving from job site to job site. Unless the only thing you consider when buying a car is reliability, Scotty Kilmer's advice is not that relevant. You know, some people in the comments are saying, oh, all people care about is reliability, you're wrong. No! Look at sales data, please, right? The top three best-selling cars in the USA, the F-150, not reliable at all. The Dodge Ram, probably the least reliable car in the entire world. <gasps> and the Silverado, not reliable. In my country where I am, New Zealand, best-selling car, Ford Ranger, not reliable. Then the Toyota Hilux, pretty damn reliable. The Mitsubishi Trident is next, you know, yeah. In the UK, best-selling car, Corsa, not reliable. Then it's the Mercedes A-Class, not reliable. Then it's the Polo, not reliable. If reliability was the only thing people cared about, then the top three best-selling cars in every country would be, you know, the Isuzu D-Max or the MUX, Toyota Yaris, and the Honda Jazz. But it just isn't, because people care about more than just reliability. Okay, this next reason is that Scotty Kilmer is a bit of a prick. Ooh. Right, Chris Fix's dream car from his childhood was a Hummer. He did this big video about how much it meant to him when he finally bought his dream car. And then not long after, Scotty Kilmer comes out with a video saying why the Hummer sucks and just dissing it the whole time. I, I, I don't care if the Hummer sucked or not. That is incredibly rude, right? If your best mate's dream car, let's say, was an Evo 9, and then, you know, one day he finally gets it, do you go up to him and I was like, Mate, Evo's a sh**! And then start listing every single thing that sucks about his brand new Evo that he just got. He's a prick! Even that video, he says stuff like, you know, Hummers are bad because they're big. This just shows that he can't really see what other people want. Being big is one thing that's actually good about it, right? It means you can carry a lot of stuff in it. It makes it, you know, better for towing. It makes it more planted off-road. You know, that's why people have, you know, F-250s. Because they're big! Just because it's bad for you, Scotty, doesn't mean it's bad for everyone else. Anyways, he also seems to think that there's no competition between him and Chris Fix. You're right, mate, there isn't! Because Scotty Kimmel's got more views. What?! Mate, you upload three times a day. Chris Fix, on the other hand, uploads one to three times a month. 
of course you've got more views. If you didn't, that would be embarrassing. Chris Fix is bigger because he's got more subscribers and every single one of his videos gets more views than Dottie Kilmer's. Another thing people said in the comments of our other video that they didn't like is that he, he's very rude. Now, I, I don't really mind this too much, right? He says like, oh, if you do this to your car, you're stupid. If you buy this car, you're an idiot. Like, I don't know. Yeah, that is pretty rude. Personally, I don't mind. I see that. Yeah. He probably does mean it though, to be honest, because he, he's like that, you know? But... And just stuff, there's a lot of stuff that he says that just make no sense, right? He says stuff, you know, why not to modify your car, right? He says, don't get a cold air intake because if you don't tune it, it makes no more power. So, so you shouldn't do it, right? Everyone modding their car knows that. They install a cold air intake when they think, okay, well, I'll get an exhaust, then I'll get a tune. In which case, if it does make power when you tune it, you should do it. Just because it doesn't make power when you don't tune it doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. Use your brain, you idiot! Sorry, that was rude. Use your brain, don't be an idiot. Ha. Huh. Be nice. You know, he's done a video saying, you know, why the Celica is the best car? Yeah. And he says, you know, it's just like a Corolla. Well, then isn't a Corolla better? Because it's literally just the same car, but it's more practical and there's more parts availability. This next point is something a lot of people uh, bring up, right? Yes, he's been a mechanic for 50 years. That's very respectable doesn't mean that he's been a good mechanic for 50 years. In fact, I'd argue nowadays he is a pretty bad mechanic. If I had a car, I wouldn't take it to him. If you watch in his videos, there's many a times when his cat is on top of a customer's car. There's also many a times where he has dirty gloves touching all the interior of a customer's car as customer's Lexus. Small things like that. And obviously we've seen that he, you know, uses dodgy brake products on brake lines he lets the brake calipers dangle and a whole bunch of other very dangerous stuff. Clearly, his techniques aren't that good. It's like, you know, if you've worked on computers for the past 50 years, right? Experience working on 50 old computers doesn't help you fix a brand new computer. It's the same with cars. Cars are so different now than 50 years ago, right? You know, we've got fuel injection, we've got direct injection, we've got turbochargers, we've got variable valve timing, we've got, you know, all this more complicated ECU technology, we've got, you know, EGR system, PCV systems, hybrids. And just next up, he's not really a car guy, is he? But with that channel and those views that he gets, he must earn bank! And his dream car is a Mustang! Now, if any car guy could comfortably afford their dream car, they're going to buy it. Scotty Kilmer can easily afford a Mustang. Now, and there's also, when he talks about performance cars, the one statistic he always talks about is top speed. Top speed is the most useless statistic about performance cars in the entire world. When you're in your performance car, like when I go out to drive, I'm doing pulls. That's about acceleration, that's about power, that's about torque. It's about drive, it's about power. We stay hungry, we devour. Put in the work. Sliding it around, that's about, you know, being rear wheel drive. That's sort of the video. Now, if you have a brain, you would have thought about what I said, considered what I said and be, okay, he's made some good points, right? Because a lot of it is facts. And, you know, you can still choose to watch him. That's perfectly fine, right? If you disagree with me, you know, explain to me in the comments, say your points on why, you know, I'm wrong, or why you still think he's good, right? And, you know, I'll happily respond to that. But if you just gotta comment dumb stuff like, Oh, you're a raging f***ing bitch of a c What, what? You're just a salty fanboy. Like, you're funny. Like, it's literally funny how dumb you are. Use some brain cells, right? Let's have an educated conversation. Stay tuned for next week's video because trust me, it's gonna be good replying to those comments because they are dense as hell. Bang the bell icon if you want to get notified when it comes out. See you next time. I love you all, unless you don't love me. <laughs>